So the iPad Mini 5 just came out, it just got released, I think we all know that. And instead of going out and actually reviewing the newest product that just got out and potentially getting way more views from that, instead I'm going to look at the first iPad Mini that ever came out. I do a lot of these things bro and honestly I would rather review the older technology than the newest one because tons of people are going to be reviewing that, that's obviously like gonna happen, I do that same thing too. But I don't have that much money right now, I'm kinda going broke, so I have to review the products that are currently already owned. <laughs> and the iPad Mini 1 is one of those devices where honestly if I saw it from a distance, I wouldn't necessarily think it was a cheap device i wouldn't even think it was that old if i was naive of the whole entire apple ecosystem like i was before i would look at the ipad mini and think it's still a pretty decent device even though it came out in 2012 it's probably almost seven years old at this point it's going to turn seven years in october i would think it's not even that bad mostly because the way these ipads look hasn't really changed too much i mean the only real crazy thing that was added from the first type of mini to the fifth one the newest one in terms of the way they look is the screen and also the front home button that one has touch id but this one does not have that but in terms of what the way they look everywhere else it seems to be the almost exact same thing but obviously if it was between this one or the ipad mini 5 obviously choose the ipad mini 5 that is a way better device but looking around the body of the first ipad mini on the front we had a 7.9 inch ips panel the resolution was honestly kind of weird it was 768 by 1024 so it's kind of hd a little bit the weird thing is is that it had 162 pixels per inch which was kind of strange that's a very very low ppi to have for a device but i totally understand it because you know this came out in 2012 a lot of devices were still coming out with like HD screens barely so. And like I said on the front we had a home button, no touch ID or anything. On the bottom we had the lightning charging port. On the back it was kind of the cool design. I really really liked the way the iPad mini looked. Way more than the iPad 4 and all those other iPads that were out at the same time. I think the iPad Air which I think came out at the same time as the iPad mini or a year or two away. The iPad mini and the iPad Air shared almost the same type of back layout. Now I will tell you without a doubt this is such a awesome design for these iPads and I'm so glad they kind of kept that same type of thing going. So that kind of covers up mostly the outside obviously no waterproofness or anything like that but it doesn't really matter i don't think you're going to be putting this device around any water anytime soon in terms of the software this is where it's kind of funny but honestly kind of sad at the same time this thing was released with ios 6 which if you can even remember back in ios 6 days that didn't necessarily have the most features, but on an iPad mini, especially with something the specs of this thing, it was pretty much blazing fast. It was perfectly fine. You have to remember that when the iPad mini was released, it was the top tier, the cream of the crop. Just like how the, like, the iPhone 4S at the time was the greatest thing, the iOS at that time reflects the devices. So they're not going to put an iOS on it that cannot be supported on the iPad mini. So the iOS 6 that was released at that time was perfectly good with the iPad mini. It was perfectly fine. It was like blazing fast almost. I saw a lot of reviews and a lot of comments commentators explaining how the iPad mini was an extremely fast device at the time but then it was upgraded to iOS 9.3.5 just like the iPhone 4s and I'll definitely tell you it was not a good experience for me when I owned it on that it was very very slow very very sluggish and I'll talk more about that in performance but in terms of the software it's not being supported anymore it's stopping at iOS 9.3.5 this was forever ago so if you get it now you're not going to get iOS 12 you're not going to get, be getting group FaceTime or any of those cool features but that should be expected for a device of this age. So in terms of software, it's not supported anymore. So take it as it is. But if that doesn't bother you, then hey, man, maybe it's a perfectly fine, capable tablet for you. Now, in terms of the performance, this is where we're probably going to spend most of the time at. And I really shouldn't because obviously it's not even decently specced anymore. But I don't necessarily also want to take away from what it brought to the table. So I have to be kind of gentle where I land my feet at. But this thing was released with the Apple A5 chip, a dual core CPU, and half a gig of RAM. So 512 megabytes of RAM. So in terms of that, obviously, if you couldn't tell, this thing was severely under specced, especially now. Even at that time, it wasn't necessarily the fastest thing in the world. In 2012, I believe we had the iPhone 5 come out and that thing had one gig of RAM. So it was weird that they released a device with half the amount of RAM as an iPhone 5 when they could have just released that, but that's kind of besides the fact. But Apple honestly has a history of that, but I'll talk more about that, I guess, in a different video. But in terms of the performance for the iPad mini, what I will tell you is this thing is very, very slow. Okay, so if you're going to do basically whatever you want on it, whether you're even opening up settings or whatever the case is, it's a very extremely slow device. And I I kind of attribute that to not only the dual core CPU and the Apple A5 chip, but the RAM. The RAM severely is underpowered for this device. Now, when they went up to the iPad Mini 2, they fixed it. They added, it was still extremely slow, but it kind of fixed it a little bit, but not even that much. The RAM is one of those things that really severely slow this thing down. And if they just got the RAM right, they could have done way better on this device. They were still going to sell a bunch of them. They marketed it really well. I remember when this thing just came out and all that, the piano commercials they had for it and everything really made me want to go get one. 
because I couldn't convince my parents to give me one because it's kind of a waste of money if you think about it. So in terms of everything you're pretty much going to do with it, it's going to be severely slow. Like I said, if you even have trouble opening up the settings page or opening up the camera, if it takes a noticeable amount of time where you're like, man, this is taking a long time, that's going to be a detrimental aspect of the, your whole entire usability of that device. So am I going to say this thing was the worst performing thing ever? No, not necessarily. I mean, at the time when it was released, it wasn't that bad. But if you're planning on using it now in 2019, which is what this whole entire video is about, I don't really think it's like the smartest choice. I'd be surprised if you're even wanting to buy this device in this day and age at this time. But even gaming, that same type of philosophy connects to that as well. You know, if you're playing slower and lower intensive games, again, you're going to have problems if you're playing higher intensive games. You're also going to have problems. There might be some lemons here and there, like Temple Run. I think you can play Temple Run on like a camera and it'll be perfectly fine. You, you can run Temple Run on a washing machine and that'll be playing it at 60 frames per second. For some reason, Temple Run is one of those games. I think I even read it on my iPhone 3G. Yes, and it worked fine. So Temple Run, I need to figure out a different game to play. That's not even a good game anymore. I mean, it's a great game, but it's not really, it doesn't really show off anything. So whatever the iPad mini you're going to use it for, it's probably going to be slow. And that's probably the best way I can wrap that whole entire performance thing up. It's not the worst thing ever. I mean, I've definitely played with devices that were slower than this, but in this day and age, it's an extremely slow device. And I would hate to recommend something like that. Like I wouldn't wish this to someone who wants to do something meaningful with their device. Now, if you're going to give this to a kid or something, they're probably not going to care. But for everyone else, you might run into some problems. Actually, you will run into some problems in performance. So that kind of covers that. Let's go ahead and move on to the camera. And this is another aspect I'm just going to brush over. It has a five megapixel back facing camera. You can shoot 1080p videos on it. And honestly, it's really not even that good. The front cameras we have nowadays are better than the back camera on this, okay? But again, at least this thing brought a camera on it and not only a back camera, but a front camera as well. And the front camera is not that bad. It's 1.2 megapixels. So in terms of the back and front camera, in my opinion, at least it brought it. It was mostly to showcase like FaceTime and all that stuff. So you could still have a device and you can still do FaceTime at the same time. So I think that's kind of a cool thing they did. I don't think anybody was necessarily using this thing to replace their iPhone camera or anything. I just think it was a kind of a nice thing they added just to do FaceTime and stuff with. And I think that's what most people use their iPad cameras for is just to do FaceTime. So in terms of the cameras, it has cameras. That's a good thing. I would not even use them. I would rather just mentally remember an image in my head and draw it later than take a picture with this thing. Just kidding. That was an over-exaggeration. I love the iPad mini line, but there were some quirks here and there. In terms of battery life though, this is an interesting thing, okay? The iPad mini had a pretty extraordinary battery life in my opinion. So it had a 4,490 mAh battery. And an interesting fact is, is that the iPhone XR and this iPad actually are only like 1,000 million hours away from each other. So hopefully we can keep increasing the battery sizes of these phones to match what the iPads used to be. But in terms of the battery life, I'll definitely say not only because this thing was underpowered and the lack of RAM and the low screen resolution and all that stuff, but also the bigger size battery, that's what aided this thing into being the battery hog that it was and battery hog in a good way maybe it was like a battery slug in a way like it slowly used better i don't know the case being the battery life on this thing was pretty good and when i used it standby time was amazing pretty much standby time on all ipads are very good but the ipad mini was very very good in that a lot of people at that time expected because the ipad mini was smaller the battery life would be worse now even though it did have a smaller battery size than other ipads that came out before and everything the battery life wasn't that bad but i would still rather have a bigger battery size and better battery life than having one or the other so that kind of covers up pretty much all the main points i wanted to talk about now some other notable things to note like i said there's really not too much going on the main thing that might even be appealing to a lot of people would be the way it looks the slimmer bezels on the side and pretty much how the newer ipad mini 5 looks just like the ipad mini 1 might be a huge proponent for you to even consider picking one of these out but i'll tell you right now that should not be the case like i've stated performance isn't really that good cameras aren't really that good really the only thing this has going for it might be the way it looks and also the battery life so what I would tell you is, is the iPad mini one still worth it in 2019? I will say no, not at all. This thing is not worth it in 2019. And the interesting thing is this thing is still selling for quite a bit of money. Like it's still selling for around like $80, $90, which honestly for a lot of people, that's not a lot of money and I understand. But for a device that's not even supported by iOS anymore, that's pretty slow. I don't really know who's buying these things anymore. So if I were you, I would not pick up an iPad mini. I would probably not even pick up an iPad mini 2. The lowest I would go would be like an iPad mini 4. I don't even think that's going to be supported anymore by Apple. So if you want to pick that up, you can. So I'll leave a link in the description for an iPad mini 4, as well as an iPad mini 5 if you want to pick those up. Just like you guys know, the iPad 
Redmi 5 is the newest one. So if you want to buy that, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But And everything that's sold through those links, a little bit of that revenue comes back to the channel and helps us do more videos like this and more comparisons and more giveaways. So, so if you want, purchase things through those links so it can help out the channel. That would mean so much. But that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button. That'll mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it'll mean so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. All those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.